Heading towards 500k views, the Mini Frustrator has become the most popular main base design on my channel. It's a low upkeep solo duo trio main base built around two loot rooms which are reached by drop down shoots and guarded by undrainable traps and a nice open main living area with all the items you need including space for a tier 3 workbench. The reason this base is so popular is threefold. Firstly, it is strong and cost efficient. While being a 26 rocket full rate, the upkeep is less than 1.5k metal fragments and 12 high qual per day. These are numbers that even casual players can commit to easily. With a protection ratio of 13 scrap per rocket, this is the most cost efficient main base on my channel. Secondly, it supports realistic progression. The base can bring you all the way from wipe to end game. It grows out of a small starter unit and progresses step by step through all tiers until the tier 3 workbench. If you get raided, everything can be rebuilt, which is an advantage that lots of players underestimate. Thirdly, it's minimal requirements. With a relatively small footprint and no special requirements towards the terrain, the base can be built anywhere. The build steps are reasonably straightforward, making this base a great choice for players who are new to the game and to building. Your requests to overhaul the design were plenty, but it took me a long time to figure out substantial improvements that would warrant a new video. Let me introduce the Mini Frustrator 2. The TC is now protected by reinforced glass, vertical embrasures and two vending machines. Normally, vertical embrasures do not provide extra protection, as rockets shot at the right spots will splash damage both the embrasures and the glass. However, from DT, I learned about a discovery by Troza. Vending machines placed in this configuration block those spots, meaning that the reinforced glass window does not take splash damage. It therefore takes 8 rockets to blow in this TC compartment, increasing the total protection to 20 rockets in this basic layout. Further, in this video, I will show you how to optionally add the two most requested features, auto turret pods and a minicopter hangar. The hangar can be reached by converting one of the chutes into a roof access point. The setup of the auto turret on the third floor takes into account that it may take a while for casual players to get to this level. They further make use of the updated airlock design. This way, the auto turrets cover almost all angles around the base. The basic version costs about 16k stone, 4k metal fragments and 100 high qual to build. The upkeep of 2600 stone, 1300 metal fragments and 17 high qual can easily be handled even by solo players. The cost of the most ideal rate are 20 rockets to TC and 26 rockets for both main loot rooms. The additional amenities of roof access and auto turrets of course increase the upkeep, but that's still easy to do. Onto the tour. We are touring the extended version with the minicopter hangar. The airlock is updated to a triangle airlock, which allows to have an auto turret on top of it. Above this door, we find drop chests and a shotgun trap to welcome door raiders. This is also the space from which you open up the garage doors of the forward auto turret pod. Behind the garage door, we find the main living space. The workbenches are now behind the entrances. This was a conscious decision to prevent cheap tool raiding through the wall that separates the chutes. This corner has been turned into another loot room because I thought that would be more useful for most players. The chute leads to one of the main loot rooms which is guarded by shotgun traps. They substantially slow down raids and may even kill inexperienced raiders while they still carry their explosives. The other chute leads to the other main loot room. To access the TC, take out a hammer and remove the embrasures and the glass window. You can repair the glass window from here. To repair the embrasure, you need to jump on top of this triangle. Let's head back upstairs to check out the minicopter hangar. This chute now serves as roof access as well. Up here we find space for another locker and sleeping bags for raid defense. The lateral auto turrets can be opened from within the hangar. A landing pad helps to safely get in the minicopter. Let's jump into the build. To test whether the footprint fits, start with a triangle and three squares, surrounded with triangles. 
had two triangles for the airlock in the front and a ring of triangles around the honeycomb in the back. I'll remove everything but the center triangle to start with the build. On the center triangle, build a compartment for the TC and place it against the right wall. If you can, close it off with reinforced glass windows. The square next to it will be the first main loot room. Use it for temporary items while you extend the base. Add two more triangles and another square. Keep the single door frame wood so you can later hatchet it out. Leave the ceiling above the triangle's wood for now. The square can house more starter items such as the level 1 workbench. With metal fragments cooking, upgrade the doors to sheet metal and close off the TC once you obtain the reinforced glass blueprint. Clear out the 1x1 one one in front of the TC for the main loot room. For the time being, don't hesitate to place shelves against the wall on the side. They should allow you to fit 5 large boxes. The sleeping bags can go into these triangles. Next, we will work on the shell of the base. Locate the back of the TC unit and place a sheet metal square foundation there. Then continue with stone triangle foundations all around the base. Only then place a roof ramp onto the square foundation. Locate the back of the main loot room and place a wooden triangle at half height. This is very important for the construction of the final loot room layout later on. Fill in the walls except for in front of the wooden door. Then close them off with ceilings. In front of the roof ramp, create an airlock made out of three triangles. Place a window above the airlock, then surround the perimeter of the second floor with stone walls. Above the wooden floor tiles, build the future chute entrances. If you plan to add roof access, you will later have to destroy this floor tile, so consider leaving it wood. Now let's upgrade the base to make use of that new airlock. Run inside and start soft siding out those floor tiles above the chutes. For each wooden building block, it should be sufficient to use three machetes, which cost just 120 frags and 300 wood. Once the floor tiles are destroyed, place a wall in the center of those triangles. You might have to move the sleeping bags for this. Use ladders against this wall to get onto the second floor. If you do not have ladders, use furnaces instead. If you have trouble jumping out of these chutes, try to crouch jump or open console and type input.autocrouch true. Go to the wooden door frame and place a full wall behind it. Then destroy it with three machetes. Place a wooden floor tile at half height and then close that triangle off with a full wall. Close off the rest of the ceiling if you haven't done that yet. The shell of the main base is now complete. Move three furnaces into this triangle next to the chute to the TC loot room. Place a wall next to the roof ramp and use this space for another loot room with four large boxes. The tier 2 workbench can go into this triangle. Close all those spaces off with window frames and embrasures. Overnight you should seal them off with reinforced glass windows. In front of the entrance, place a wall. Above it, a floor tile at half height. Fill it with a row of small boxes. Later, add a shotgun trap onto the ceiling. Close that bit off with a double door. 
The airlock can be a great place to deploy the research table and a large box. Now let's complete the secondary main loot room. Remove all remaining items. The tier 1 workbench can be destroyed with a single hatchet. Upgrade the foundations to sheet metal. Replace the door with a garage door. Place two large boxes, flush against the back and the side. This is done easiest if you push your avatar against the wall while placing them. Then, you should be able to squeeze a small box between them and four additional ones in a row in front of them. This equates a total storage of four large boxes and still should allow you to replace the garage door at any time. Attach two shotgun traps above them against the wall. Use the floor tile in the honeycomb to place a triangle like this. Place a large box onto the tip and another box against the ultra wall. A shotgun trap should fit right between them. Before you can complete the main loot room, save up 38 high qual. Crouch into the DC unit and upgrade the foundation and the left wall. You need to do this now, as later you won't be able to reach those anymore. Now save up another 40 high qual and 6 gears. Craft two vending machines. Pick up the boxes and destroy the shelves with a tool. Replace the sheet metal door with a garage door. Upgrade the window frame and the foundation to sheet metal. The dots on the foundation will help with the alignment of the vending machines. Make sure that the right vending machine is not too close to the door or you cannot replace it. It should not extend over the second row of dots. Diving fins can help achieving this a lot more easily. The second vending machine can be placed against the rear wall. Disable broadcasting before going on. Remember, vending machines serve as formidable loot storage units. In front of them, place one large and two small boxes, and a shotgun trap above them. Unless you forgot to add in the half-height triangle, you can now place a floor tile against the left wall. Hop onto it and place a large box against the ultra wall. Then, place a shotgun trap pointing downwards above it against the wall. A second large box should fit into the remaining space. Never upgrade this triangle past stone. The reason is, if the vending machine close to the door gets destroyed and the triangle is still there, you cannot place the vending machine far enough away from the door to be able to replace it. The stone triangle is likely to get destroyed when the vending machine gets destroyed and if necessary it can be soft side picked out. Fill the second floor bit by bit with garage doors where shown. No worries, you can do this bit by bit over time. This allows you to place the repair bench and two small boxes above the chute. Note, if you ever need to replace the garage door, those items will have to be picked up. One locker can go into the center triangle, a second one on the way to the exit. Should you obtain a tier 3 workbench during the wipe, place it in front of the window with a tier 2. Two more furnaces can fit here. The basic version of the base is almost complete. All that is missing is to upgrade the core to increase the base's durability. Upgrade the floor tiles above the main loot room to armored, and the ceiling above the core to sheet metal. Only upgrade this floor tile if you won't be adding roof access. Continue with the chute and the main loot room. As said earlier, only skip the triangle shelf. Upgrade the other main loot room in the same fashion. You might have to pick up a box to reach the rear wall. The back of the TC unit should become armored. Head towards the entrance and upgrade the roof ramp, as well as this wall to sheet metal. Finally, head to the back of the base and add the characteristic separator.
This concludes the simple version of the base, which is now a 26 rocket raid. In the following, I'm showing you how to turn the basic into the extended version. To prepare the roof access, I'd recommend climbing onto the base first. Around these two triangles create an airlock. Head back into the base and soft side out this floor tile. You can now reach the roof through this chute. Surround the core with window frames and one garage door. Place secondary bags and a lock into this corner. Place a barbecue and two small boxes above the elevator. Above the airlock create a landing pad for the helicopter. Note that only the first triangle needs to be supported and upgraded to stone. If you own Christmas lights mark the landing pad for night landings. Use shotgun traps to guard the entrance door. Use the crouch button to drive the minicopter into this corner in case you want to store it inside of the base. Go back to the main living space and guard the elevator with another shotgun trap. Next we're going to set up three auto turret pods. The first one goes above the airlock. Upgrade the floor tile to sheet metal to counter soft side picking. Weapon wise for a base like this, you're probably well off with a python as armament. The other two auto turrets can go onto these triangles behind the windows on the roof. Remember that you can open and close those garage doors from the inside of the base. For the simplest electrical circuit, head to the secondary loot room. Swap out two small boxes for a generator. Run it into a splitter. And run each of the outputs into one of the turrets. The turrets will be active for as long as the generator is running. For a more permanent solution, replace the furnaces with a large battery. Place at least three, better four solar panels onto the roof and have them face north. Run their combined output into the battery. Inside of the loot room, add a switch and a NOR switch. Run both the switch and the generator into the OR switch. And the OR switch into the splitter. This way the circuit can draw power from both the battery and the generator. Note that the battery charges significantly faster if the switch is off. In case you get rich over the course of the wipe, here are a few recommended extra upgrades. In case you get rich in high qual, use it to upgrade more parts of the base to armored. Start with the wall that separates the chutes. Then upgrade the walls of the main loot room and the chute. This should leave you at about 40 high qual per day. These upgrades counter attempts to raid through the walls into the main loot room with a DC. And while the honeycomb remains stone, the base continues to look unassuming. Personally, I would probably leave it at that with the upgrades. The door raid will now be by far the cheapest option, so add stronger doors wherever possible. Of course, the door raid cost is calculated without the traps, and you never know how much extra explosives raiders will have to spend to get rid of these. 
This concludes the build of the Mini Frustrator 2. As always, consider it a platform and adapt it to your needs and preferences. May it bring you safely through the wipe. Evil Wurst, out. <laughs>